So this video is in response to a question and I was asked about the efficiency of engines at altitude. Like why is a, an, an aircraft engine more efficient at altitude? And I thought I'd put some numbers on this to, to help explain why. So let's assume we have two engines, um, similar engines, one at sea level and one at 10,000 meters. And we have the ISA values for pressure, temperature, and density at sea level and at this altitude of 10,000 meters. Okay, so we're going to assume that the engines are uh, traveling at Mach 0.8 and we'll want to work out how much air is going into the, to the engine. So the mass flow of air is equal to the density times the cross-sectional area times the velocity. So we're going to assume a value of the cross-sectional area. So let's assume it's 0.2 meters squared. And, and let's assume this is um, a pure turbojet. So the Mach number is the velocity over the speed of sound. And if we transpose that, we can get the velocity, which is the Mach number times the speed of sound. And the speed of sound is gamma RT. Or gamma is the ratio of specific heat capacities. And R is the universal gas constant. Okay, so um, let's plug in some values. So at uh, altitude, the speed of sound would be gamma R, these are two constants, uh, 1.4287, and the temperature. So the ISA temperature at that altitude is 223. So that gives me a speed of sound of 300 meters per second, where at sea level, the temperature is 288 degrees Kelvin, so that's 340 meters per second. I can then use that value and plug it into uh, this equation here to get the velocity. So the true velocity of the engine at 10,000 meters is 0.8, so the Mach number of 0.8 times 300, which is uh, 240 meters per second. And at sea level, it's 272 meters per second. And then we can use this value to calculate the mass flow. So it's the density times the cross section area times the velocity. So the density at the altitude is 0.413. We're going to assume a cross section area of 0.2 and the 240 meters per second we have here. So that gives me a, a mass flow of air through this engine of 20 kilograms per second. And at sea level, it is 67 uh, kilograms per second. Okay, so um, to do the comparison, we're going to assume that we're putting exactly the same amount of work into the compressor. So, so let's assume we're using 50 kilowatts, sorry, 5,000 kilowatts of power to, to turn the compressor. So if I'm putting that amount of uh, work in, what am I going to get out? Well, uh, the work um performed by the compressor is equal to mass times the specific heat capacity at constant pressure times the temperature difference between the compressor outlet and the compressor uh, inlet and we're going to assume that the compressor inlet is just simply this temperature here the the isa temperature okay so if i plug the values in so i'm saying uh, 5000 kilowatts is equal to 20 because we got the mass flow here of 20 kilograms per second. This is the value for the specific heat capacity of air at constant pressure. It's 1.005 kilowatts per kilogram degrees Kelvin. Okay, so we're leaving everything in kilowatts. And I'm plugging in 223 here for T2 due to this temperature here. And down below here, it's going to be 288. Okay, so when I solve those equations, I'm getting a value of 471 degrees Kelvin here at the output of this compressor and 362 degrees Kelvin at the output uh, here. So if we put the same amount of work in, we're getting these different values. Um, okay. I'm assuming that the compressor is operating at 100% efficiency here. Okay. okay, so if I want to work out the compression ratio, the
the uh, compression ratio in an adiabatic process a, um, is this equation here. So I'm just going to transpose that. So I have the temperatures and I want to get the, the pressure ratios. So I have T3 for both altitudes and I have T2, which is the uh, compressor inlet uh, temperature for, for both uh, altitudes. So I'm going to plug those values in. So up here it's 471 and 223 to the power of gamma all over gamma minus 1. And remember gamma is 1.4 and that gives me a pressure ratio of 13.7. Whereas at sea level, uh, this value here is 362, and the temperature at the inlet of the compressor was 288, and that gives me a compression ratio of 2.2. Okay, the efficiency then of the engine. So the efficiency of an engine is it's 1 over 1 minus the pressure ratio to the gamma minus 1 all over gamma. So the pressure ratio here was 13.7. The pressure ratio here was 2.2. So that gives me, gives me an engine, overall engine efficiency of 52% and down here of 20%. Okay, so there's a big difference there. Um, um, but I hope this shows that, you know, putting the same amount of work in you know, we're going to get a better compression ratio here and a better compression ratio gives me a better efficiency of engine. So that's why they would fly aircraft at the higher altitudes because that's where the engine is at its most efficient.